All right, y'all, what to do? Your boy is back on the grind. One more time, your boy is back at it again, you guys, and I am at home. Just got home from work, put the little one down, so now I'm going to make a video for you guys. Now, I haven't really had much content to film, uh, mainly because I've been kind of taking a break uh, on working on the cars and whatnot. Uh, the Caprice has been acting really funny lately. I think I made a video. If not, I talked about it in regards to it not starting. And uh, when I had towed it home, my buddy towed it home on his... Uh, on this trailer so anyways i replaced the crank sensor and then it started right up and then i drove it a few times and it started up and then when i got at home one day it didn't start again so i was like man it's doing the same thing so it kind of was leading me to believe it was something with the voltage maybe the battery was going bad or something which is really odd um, you know on the holly setups if you don't have a certain amount of of uh, volts when you're trying to start the car it won't actually start so i don't know if the gm uh, computer is that way or not uh, but I don't know if the battery's kind of going bad and then it's just not allowing it to start or not but what I was thinking I was like well let me put a jump box to it as you guys know I got a, a sponsorship from uh, Auto One that they sent me that jump back that jump pack so I hooked it up that thing cranked over like it's never had before I mean it went quick and then it started up so um i'm not really sure what's going on i think it might be the battery but now that i think about it this car has been going through batteries like every three years which is like really odd so it's leading me to believe there might be a draw on it somewhere and i don't know where it's from because i shouldn't have a battery go bad like that um i put it in storage i unhook it and i usually unhook the negative but maybe what i'll start doing is i just maybe just start unhooking it completely i don't know i don't know why these batteries are doing that so i might take it out and go get it tested and just see what they say uh, but anyways that's what's going on with that so but i'm not going to buy a battery for it right now because now we're coming into the off season up in here in washington so i'm just going to store it as is i know it'll start if i jump it so we should be good there and the chevelle just haven't been doing anything to it there's actually a series of things that i want to do to it i want to actually redo the whole fuel system uh, I think I'm cutting myself short on power just because of the type of injectors that I'm running, the fuel line size that I'm running, and also the fuel pump. So I've been wanting to get a new fuel tank anyway. So when I get the fuel tank, I'm going to get the new fuel pump. I'm going to change all my lines to dash eight. And then I think I might go like 100 to 120 pound injectors. So uh, I think that'll get all of the power out of it that I need because when I went to go tune it the first time uh, my guy said that he was maxing out the injectors like pretty quickly so there's 60s in there right now and also it was maxing out my fuel pump so the engine is basically starving for more fuel which means more fuel more power so we'll see uh how that goes this winter and fall and shoot that'll be another project another day also, what I want to do too, is, and I haven't done one of these videos yet, is I want to do like a how much it costs type of video. I, I know a lot of people do that. I've just kind of been refraining from doing that because I think mine is a little bit different because I do technically all, a lot of my own work. and uh, But that really shouldn't make a difference anyway because everybody's build is going to cost something a little bit different. Also too, I haven't been wanting to put one of those out either because... My wife doesn't watch these videos, but just in case she does, I don't want her to know how much I'm spending on this. So, uh, especially the Chevelle, because that's a decent amount of money. Even though I did my own work, uh, it's going to be a decent amount. But I think it'll be good for you guys. It'll be also great content. And it'll also show you that you can do a full restoration. Speaking of the Chevelle, you can do a full restoration and not really break the bank, per se. You always hear about these people bragging about oh 100k on the build 150k on the build i don't i don't want to say i don't know why people do that because i do know why they brag about it or whatever but to me it's not about that i'm trying to spend i don't want to say the least that i can but i'm i'm trying to get the best bang out of my buck for every single thing that i do for the car and if that requires me to buy a great part and you know something that's a little bit more expensive but to install it myself I'll do that. So, um, and if, if it requires me to go to the junkyard and get a part on the low that I know I can do and, and, and then fix it or, you know, clean it up a little bit and install it on the car, I'll do that too. I have no problems going either way, but some people will frown on you for going to the junkyard for doing this, that, whatever. 
the Caprice build was a junkyard build for the most part with a mix of new parts. So I'm not opposed to doing any of that. So, but anyways, you guys, this video is actually in regards to the Regal. I want to catch you up on the Regal. Our AC just shut on. Our new AC just shut on. We got a new furnace and a new uh, heat pump. And now this house is cooling like no other. It's great. It's actually damn cold to be quite honest, but it works awesome. But anyways, you guys, uh, the Regal. So the Regal, I got new parts for. Uh, I'll take you outside here and I'll show you that here real quick as well too after this. But the Regal is actually on pause right now. Uh, my buddy had a family emergency that took him away from uh, the build for quite some time and it's just on pause right now. So I'm not really in a rush to get it and I really don't want to ask him like, hey, do you know when it's going to be done or whatever? Just because I know what he's going through and I'm not trying to put out his business or anything, but I just want to kind of let him handle what he's handling and then he'll, I know he'll get to the car um, when he can. So anyways, that's where we're at on that. So I'm really excited to get it back. I know a lot of people are excited for me to get it back because I get messages on it all the time, but it is coming, you guys. But in the meantime, I have acquired some pieces that I think will go really good with the build and all of them are engine upgrades. So I'm gonna take you outside right now and show you that, but if you're new to the channel, definitely think about subscribing now. Hit that notification bell, all that good stuff, y'all. Mr. Griffin 23 in the building. Let me flip this camera around and I'll show you guys what's up. I'll see you guys too. Don't be trying to laugh at my shoes. <laughs> These are actually my first Crocs I've ever owned. And the only reason why I got them is because my little one got some Crocs and my wife went to Nordstrom's Rack to buy some things for our trip. And then she asked if I wanted some. And I was like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and cross over. So your boy done crossed over. <laughs> but I actually don't really wear them that much. But anyways, let me um, take you to the car here real quick. It's actually an old seat that I was going to actually use for the K5, but now I don't need it anymore. So I really don't want to throw it away. I might put it up for sale and see, but I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, you guys, this is it right here. Oh, man. So this is actually and in a cooler. So what it is, it is a custom made shroud. And I don't know who made it. I don't know if the previous uh, uh, seller that I bought it from, actually he wasn't even selling it. I asked if, if he uh, had anything like this and I'll show you here in a moment what I'm talking about. And he said that he actually did. So um, I'm, pretty sure either he made it or somebody else made it that he got it from or whatever but it is a custom made fan shroud a little bit bigger than stock and i think that'll go really good with this right here so let me put this over here so what this is this is actually a stock intercooler for a grand national or turbo buick Yeah. all right so you got your stock intercooler here for a turbo buick now what's different about it is is the little outlet part that goes to the turbo this is usually a little bit smaller i want to say it's a two inch and this right here actually is a two and a half inch i believe so which means more air in, more air out. And what it is, is back in the day, this company made a piece that was like this and it stopped right here. Now you can see the little bit of imperfection that it has on that neck right there. So what it was, is it was a piece that actually stopped right here. And what you did with the previous uh, intercoolers you cut that piece off you weld this piece on and then you pretty much kind of make it look as stock as possible so for short these were called uh, dut necks so i think the the full name here is like dut wowler or something like that so for short they called them dut necks all right so but from what i heard and i know a few people that have these on their cars and that have used them now if somebody has this on their car they 
had it a long time ago or they you know somebody had installed it prior to them a really long time ago i don't know how long they haven't been selling these or this company went out of business or whatever but i know it was a popular thing back in the day now there's all types of companies that are making aftermarket intercoolers and things like that you know so um you pretty much just go with a new intercooler but if you want to keep the stock look like a lot of people did back in the day without changing a bunch of stuff they would do this upgrade and from my understanding this upgrade is a really good one on this stock intercooler so i'm really excited about this right here uh, especially with the custom fan trout i think it's going to look super dope in there and it's going to give me that a little bit more added little little oomph to the build overall so uh let's go ahead and go to the garage monster right there y'all let me turn on this light okay all right you guys so what you're looking at here is a turbo and a downpipe. Now, these two weren't comboed together. This downpipe is actually out of my buddy Nung's car, and this old turbo was actually off of my previous Regal. Now, speaking of my buddy Nung, he's the one that has that 1,000 horsepower Grand National. Uh, just as a side note here, you guys, I want you to definitely put him in your thoughts and prayers uh he's actually in the hospital right now going through some major major um uh, life-threatening things you could say so uh he has been getting better um but uh, i don't want to put his business out there like that or too much but just know that at one point he really wasn't doing well and now he's getting better he's still a long ways out of being in the clear but uh, he could use all the positive vibes out there, you guys. So he's a really good friend of mine. I consider him a brother. Uh, we've known each other a long time. We're pretty much turbo. The turp, pretty much the turbo Buick community brought us together and the love for those cars. And so, uh, and since then, you know, we've done, you know, holidays together, car shows together, all kinds of stuff. So definitely keep him in your thoughts and prayers, you guys. But this is actually out of his uh, Grand National. And he just gave it to me, so we're gonna see about putting this on the uh, the Regal as an upgrade. And then this right here, I think that is a TE forty five A, I believe. And it's not a huge turbo, but back in the days, again, back in the days, <laughs> and and you guys will start to 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 really see that I'm kind of like old school at heart, so. Uh, especially when it comes to these Regals. So a lot of the old stuff that works, I like to kind of use it. Now, I know there's a lot of new technology and things like that, and I probably got to, you know, get up with the times. But I'm not so well-versed and knowledgeable on these Turbo Regals where I know every single little thing. But the main thing is I do know these cars, and I know kind of what works from what my particular setups are. And since that I'm keeping everything fairly stock... Uh, you know, simple upgrades will be great for this build overall. So I know back in the days, uh, they were running these with great success and just pairing them with just mild bolt-on pieces and small upgrades kind of here and there, uh, they worked great. So I know some people that, you know, get in the tens with this particular turbo uh, based off, you know, their upgrades and setups and whatever. So I'm not saying that I'm trying to go in the tens, but um, I think this will be a nice upgrade while upgrading the injectors and uh, doing some other odds and ends. So good turbo. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take it to get serviced just to make sure everything is good with it uh, while it's already out before putting it back into uh, the Regal. So right now the Regal just has a stock set up. The Regal is completely stock, you guys, completely stock. So I'm just going to add some nice, really 
low maintenance upgrades and just run the car, drive it as it is, and just enjoy it. So that is pretty much it for the upgrades that I wanted to show you guys. Again, just turbo, downpipe, uh, blow off valve, and uh, and uh, the intercooler. So I think those will, those will be some really nice upgrades. I did talk to um, to uh, Oliver and Son. Shout out to them. Oh, I should probably unplug this. Why is this thing? This thing still ain't charged yet. My freaking jump box. But anyways, y'all, I talked to, to them. They're out of Cali. They work on a lot of these turbo Buicks as well. And um, he told me, because I said, I told him my goals and what I wanted to do with it just to kind of keep the, the, the car mostly stock. And he was on board with that. He thought that was a great idea, especially if I'm not really trying to drive fast or putting like, you know, different types of uh, extreme combos together or anything like that. But he was saying that the best thing you can do for these turbo Buicks is upgrade the, the fuel system. He said that's like one main thing that a lot of people lack and one main thing that these cars really respond to is is fueling so he says that he would upgrade the fuel system he would even go like 80 100 pound injectors even on a stock setup you can always grow into them so i'll probably go with some 80s and uh and upgrade i think the fuel pump is upgraded already i think it's a 340 but um i'll investigate that as well too and um then i'll uh there's some other little easy little bolt-ons that i want to put on as well along with the turbo down pipe it already has a new exhaust on it so we're good there and then the uh, intercooler and just really clean up the engine i really just want to clean up the engine to make it really nice really simple really clean and just to kind of have it just just be a nice quality driver with a little bit of a little bit of get up you know what i'm saying so so anyways with that being said that is my update on the regal i hope you guys enjoyed that so for those of you that asked me questions or wondering where the regal is that's where it is these are the parts that i've collected for <laughs> upgrades on it and i do have some more i just haven't you know i don't have them really out right now to show you but uh, it's going to be a nice it's going to be a nice nice build overall and I'm really looking forward to uh, to sharing this with you guys. Really, really, I really am. So, um, oh, I don't know if I've ever showed the wheels um, as well, too. So the wheels are actually in the back, so I can't go back there right now. And they're actually covered up. So what I'll do is I'll insert some pictures here at the end of the video. So uh, you guys can see those. Man, those wheels are going to really, really set it off, especially with the new paint so but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you guys my arm's tired from holding this camera but if you're new to the channel again definitely think about subscribing y'all hit the notification bell all that good stuff y'all mr griffin 23 in the building man got some heat coming stick with me all right let's get it let's go i appreciate all you guys thank you so much deuces peace out